Hey, do you ever get a cool sample library, but it's just cut up wrong? Like the, there's a gap at the beginning before the transient of the drum sample. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can fix that using Reaper. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on art, design, music, filmmaking, productivity, and more. It's one of the first places I go when I want to learn something new. Last week, I found a really awesome class from Andy J. Pizza. It's called Make Creativity Your Career, Six Exercises to Create a Successful Side Project. You know how in a video game, there's all these side quests that give you equipment or skills that prepare you to finish the game. Um, well, I didn't realize until I did this course that I've been on side quests my whole life. Uh, seven years of the Home Recording Show podcast, doing videos like this one right now. Uh, all of these things are preparing me for the future. This class will help your business, your creative work, and your life. Uh, it will help you set goals and attain them. I highly recommend this class. It's one of my favorites that I've seen so far on Skillshare, and I'm sure I'll be watching it a few times. If you want to watch these classes or any of the thousands of other classes, you can get free access for two months uh, using my link down below. And if you want to continue your membership, it's only $10 a month. Huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring the Reaper blog, for supporting creators on their platform and on YouTube. All right, so here we are in, in Reaper, and let's have a look at this drum sample library. It's from the uh, Rowan TR-606. I think I got this sample pack from Reddit years ago. It's just a ton of uh, hardware samplers, drum machines and stuff like that. I um, mean, there's some cool sounds in here. Oh, headphones on. There's some cool sounds in here. A lot of them have this long gap at the beginning. And when you drop this into a sampler, it's just gonna be a pain. You're, you're gonna lose punch. Everything's gonna keep, kind of be out of time. And if you want that really strict on the grid sort of thing, um, yeah, it's just not really gonna work. So I'm gonna drop all of these in. Luckily, there's not a lot in this particular pack. And uh, before we get too far into this, we should check in the preferences. There's a couple things here that make um, this job easier as well as pretty much any sort of audio editing stuff. These settings can get in the way. I've turned off create automatic fade in, fade out for new items. This is normally on by default. And as it says, it puts a little fade at the beginning, which means that your snare loses that hard attack at the beginning or your kick drum it's it's has a fade in and it just it's not going to sound the way that the real recording is i also have all the loop settings turned off and if we go to preferences audio i have turned off tiny fade out on playback stop and playback start make sure that these are off or you're never going to really hear that the exact uh sound like i mean it's just like a millisecond or something but it does affect the sound when you're uh, looping or you play back uh, two sa sounds identical one after the other. The first one's gonna have a weird fade in on it. All right, so let's make this track big. We're just gonna kind of zoom in here basically until we see the dots and I'll trim that. You can split it and then delete it if you want. I'm just gonna jump to the next item here and trim that like that. Just zoom in, zoom out, and check that everything's right. Basically, you want to go from where it's where it's silence or where it's noise to the actual kind of transient of this sound. We'll jump to the next one. So you just want to go through, make sure that there's no large gaps there. I can play it back now. And notice that some of these are quite loud, so I'm going to take the symbol, just bring that down by like one, and any of these other ones that are like clipping. I don't like normalizing samples because you just have to turn them down 
again later. Uh, but turning these down to like minus one just kind of per allows you a, at least a little bit of room to uh, you know, do processing and stuff like that. We can loop this, uh, set your time range to the item, and enable looping. So we've got our samples trimmed. They're sounding much better than they were originally. They're not gonna clip or anything like that now. There are multiple ways of getting these exported, and it all kind of depends on if you're adding effects or um, if you've had to split things and like, um, you know, make a symbol tail longer, things like that. There's different ways of exporting. You could glue each item individually. You could use the render window. You could use uh, drag and drop to copy them into the folder. Um, I'm going to use the batch converter that works pretty well here. You can double click on the track to select all, go to file menu and batch file item converter. Click on add, click on add selected media items. Then I like to check use source directory. I'm going to use the source name and add a, a dash and like edited something like that, just so that we can clearly see that these are different files. Reaper is a non-destructive audio editor, so you can't directly replace the original files um, with these new edited files. So we're just gonna have to choose a different name. And for the options, we're keeping things on source, I think it's probably going to use the, the project sample rate and bit depth and all that stuff, um, but it's fine. Um, so we hit convert all. Works very quickly on this small set of uh, samples. Um, and let's go into this original folder here. I right click on one of them, show in explorer slash finder. And so we've got our original and the modified ones. I'm gonna select by date modified. I will select all of these and delete. Uh, so the originals are now gone. I select these, right click, rename, and I'm going to replace the text. So I'm going to take off uh, the dash edited and replace with nothing. And you know, this is actually a good opportunity to actually name these better because you don't want every single library to have, you know, bass drum. And because Reaper gets confused sometimes, it pulls the sample from the wrong library, things like that. So actually this, um, I'm going to add text, uh, tr606, and then underscore. Uh, no, we'll put a space. Snare drum. Yeah. This is much more organized. So I'm going to delete this original track and close this window. I'll import all of these into here. On, uh, let's do a single track. So there we go. All of our samples are nicely cut up. And these will work in any sampler, whether we're using Reaper's built-in sampler, Resample-Matic, or with uh, Citala, or with Geist, or any of the other samplers that you might use. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, or visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.